yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. We're in the middle of the outback and I always get a bit scared coming out here because it is quite dangerous. What the f Jared saw something, I saw something, two separate sightings. Oh. That's really weird. Next to one of the tombstones is a framed newspaper cutout and the newspaper cutout describes an assault and a murder. I need to know if I'm actually talking to someone. And the window. The window? Something is drawing us to that window. Are you able to touch Jared? Him? Yeah, him. Keepers, thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, we have ventured out into the middle of the Aussie outback for you. We are going to be investigating a ghost town. There is a lot of history surrounding this place and Jared and I have already visited during the day and we both saw something there that was strange, unexplainable, with our own eyes. So I'm really, really excited for tonight's investigation. So stay tuned. The Kanyaka Station is a well-preserved ghost town in the middle of the South Australian outback. The remote location dates back to 1852 when it was established by a man named Hugh Proby who was to die suddenly and tragically soon after. The site would go on to grow and become a thriving cattle and sheep station, housing 70 families who lived and worked at the site. We decided to visit the remote abandoned ghost town to investigate if any paranormal activity from its former life still remained. What we discovered was truly surprising and at times very scary. All right guys, so I'm gonna take you to the ghost town shortly, but before we do, Jared and I have traveled out to another area of significance that is related to this ghost town. And I thought that it would be important to come out here and pay our respects to this person, as well as just explore the site a little bit. So I've brought you out to a place known as Proby's Grave. I am standing in front of Hugh Proby's grave. This gentleman immigrated over from England in 1851. By 1852, he had founded the Kanyaka station and that is the ghost town that we're going to be visiting tonight. He didn't last too long after that because in the same year that he founded Kanyaka station, he actually passed away and he died in this spot. Basically, he drowned after a flash flood had swelled the creek that is just behind me at the time he was trying to guide cattle during a thunderstorm got swept from his horse and he sadly drowned what the hell is going on out there i don't know what that is i don't even know what animal would make that noise uh. <laughs> he sadly did die he was buried here where he died not at Kanyaka station which has its own cemetery because by that time Kanyaka station was so early in its history it didn't even have a cemetery that was yet established so he's buried here and it's his grave is quite interesting because a lot of his family from the UK obviously you know loved him so about six years after his death his brothers and sisters over there got his huge gravestone sent over from England which was quite a feat at the time because you see the thing it is huge but yeah we thought that we would come out here pay our respects to Hugh before we head over to Kanyaka station to investigate tonight so I don't know if you're around Hugh but if you can hear us we're going to visit the small town that you established and we're very excited for it and if you want to communicate or make contact with us tonight we're we're all for that thank you all right so jared and i are driving back to the ghost town now it's dark down this spooky sketchy road and we even did a bit of four-wheel driving for a creek you know little four-cylinder <laughs> yeah don't uh not encouraging that but here we are enjoying the drive yeah i mean I suppose i'm just worried we seen like a a baby cow early that was out of its fence and i'm just worried if we're gonna hit it so i'm like really like keep my eyes peeled for it I'm really nervous. <laughs> we just got to the point where we need to leave our car and trek out to our first set of ruins. Basically, there's two major sets of ruins here at the Kanyaka station. So I've chosen this one where we're going to start tonight and then later, probably in a follow-up part, which will be coming soon. So make sure you're subscribed and have your notification bell on. We're gonna head back towards the homestead ruin and that is actually where Jared saw something, I saw something, two separate sightings 
that are both quite interesting so I'm excited to tell you about those but we are heading out this way into the darkness along a sketchy ass path so yeah I'm, I'm nervous we're in the middle of the outback and I always get a bit scared coming out here because it is quite dangerous before we get into things though I am wearing my new merch Halloween merch so yeah check it out links are below and it all goes towards supporting us <laughs> um okay so we are gonna should we get on the road jared yep oh cool. i hate it all right let's go do we go left or oh, that way or that way left. oh my dear lord there are so many bats around us i don't know if it's because we've got this bright ass light it's freaking me out a bit but we we're at the Ken Yucca station and we we're at the section where they used to do a lot of the work related to sheep, so shearing sheep. And that's actually what this is behind me. This ruin is essentially pens and shearing areas where, I don't know, they sheared the wool off, right? So, it, I don't know, it kind of looks weird. I've never seen a ruin look like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of the brightness, I think they should be able to get a good view of it. Yeah. Yeah, just so a I'm massive as well and it's what's that super bright light in the sky jared where you can see it on my night vision camera just i said is that a planet i reckon it might be yeah y'all can see that dude the light the sky out here is incredible at night we are just in the middle of the desert there's no light pollution it is shut all of these lights off that we have now it is pitch black out here and quite still besides the bugs and the um the bats Guys, I've just hit record on GhostTube as well. Jared and I, we're just going to walk around the ruins and just see if anything comes through. If there is anybody around who wishes to communicate with Jared and I, we thank you for that. If you want to say something to us very loud or come towards the lights in my hand, maybe you can communicate with us. I really kind of want to get inside this ruin here. Is this the way in? <laughs> I think so. It's like a little Willy Wonka door. <laughs> oh jeez. If there's somebody still here at the Kanyaka station, can you please step forward and say hello? I've never heard bats this loud. What's in here? I can't see. <gasps> That's definitely how I'm feeling right now, yes. <laughs> Actually, I am a bit frightened. I feel like mostly I'm frightened because the bats I can hear. Just careful because there's a few holes on the floor here. Holy moly, yeah, there is. Okay. Frightened? Are you frightened of us? We're not frightened of you. You don't have to be frightened of us either. Monster. Oh there was God. a monster sized bug that just flew over my head. Monster? What's monster in reference to? I wonder how literal monster could mean as well. Well, I mean, this place, there's no dark history associated with this place, is there? I know there was some deaths, but like nothing evil or anything like that. There was something. I didn't know about this before coming here, but I read. There's a little cemetery next to one of the tombstones is a framed newspaper cutout and the newspaper cutout describes an assault and a murder that was a around here you know and then they're buried here so i don't know where exactly that took place and, and i don't even know it's it could be just a random fluctuation you know what i mean but as soon as i i'm gonna walk through this door again that's where i got the two Responses. If there's someone here, can you tell me your name? Feel free to follow us. We're going to walk over to the cottages. Jack. Oh, Jack. Jack. What was Proby's first name? Hugh. Hugh. Hugh Proby. 
I tell you what, I, there will probably be a jack in the records of Kanyaka. I wouldn't doubt that. Jack? Jack dead. Where are you, Jack? Can you tell us where to go? Things are quite interesting so far. Did you work here, Jack? Maybe you lived here? We'd like to know who we're talking to. Do you not want to talk to us, Jack? I did just say when we were leaving that room, can you tell me your name? Can you make a noise or something for us, Jack? Just so we know that you're around? towards the Shearer's quarters. So this would have been where the people who worked in the, sh you know, the sheds that we were just in lived and spent a lot of time. So I'll just kick something. Relic. That is a relic of, it must be metal. I think that's a tin can or a lid. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> where they would have lived. No, Vincent. Vincent. I'm gonna get you to go in first just because I cannot see Jared. Oh jeez. Well I've got no light and you do. So. <laughs> Vincent, is that a first or a last name? <coughs> oh, you scared me. Oh a bug flew in my mouth. What the heck? A bug flew in my mouth. Yep. I can hear lots of bats. I mean, it could have been wind. It didn't sound as distinct as gravel, but it sounded as though something went past the doorway just here. Jack or Vincent? Is that you? Can you guide me where to go? Give me a sign if we should go into here. Or maybe here. Are we welcome inside? This last room actually looks a little different. Is there anyone home? Oh, I got a spider here. That I just walked right past. <laughs> so I need a little one, but. Just don't hit him. Mm. Is there anyone inside this room? A nice fire in this one. Could you hear that in there? Yeah. What was that? Must have been some sort of animal. Can you help me get out? Because I can't see the spider. Yeah, hang on. Just go. There he is there. Oh, is he coming down? Yeah, just go under him. Go under him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Damn, our merch looks good. Yeah, it actually really does. I love it. I'm on this <laughs> one. I actually made this year's merch, guys. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you reckon? Um, yeah, it's definitely got that creepy vibe. I think because it's so dark, there's literally no one around here. We're in a pretty remote area. Um, there's lots of bats and bugs and creepy crawlies, which is a bit freaky. Mm. So, I do think it's cool we got a couple of names. We never get names. Yes. So. Always excited to get names because that's something that you can actually fact check. 
and we will be doing that in part two when we go back mm. towards the cemetery. But I reckon maybe we go down towards the area where we received the first responses and we continue to reach out there. I do get a scary vibe. Like, as you said, it might be just us being out here because it's so remote. The Aussie Outback is not a place you want to play games with, guys. <laughs> it can be quite dangerous and it is scary being out here so far away from anyone just in the pitch black of night. So, yeah. So let's get some gear and go back towards the area where we got two responses and we'll monitor it from a few angles and we'll try and reach out some more. Oh. Hello. I think this cat was dead, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to walk away. Follow me. It's weird that it's going off. If I was mapping a figure right now, just standing there like, woo, <laughs> with the buzzer, I would be like, wow, but it's not. Can you step away from those noisy lights? They're just going even more bonkers, hey? What's up? I don't know, I just heard something in here. Heard something? Yeah. Shut that thing up, because it's driving me nuts. Weird, huh? Yeah, I mean... Can you come back? Can you do that again? Now you know how that works. Feel free to come back and do that again for us. All right guys, so that was kind of weird and interesting. We have just set up the ghost tube SLS to monitor this area. Reason being right here was where we first got our ghost tube responses on the initial sort of walkthrough. That's interesting. But if you know the cat balls that I also laid out next to the REM pod or a figure is mapped when that happens, it makes it a lot more compelling. That's why I have multiple pieces of equipment right in the same spot. Jared and I are gonna go into this room and just sort of call out. But if there is anybody around and you're interested in us, you wanna let us know that people, they're still here, they're still at the station. Can you go touch any of those light up balls or go towards that noisy buzzer? So let's leave this rolling for a little bit. Let's just go hop in here. So I just wanted to stand in this room and see if I got any vibes from it because the words frightening and monster that we received is pretty much as soon as I walked through the doorway in here. Hello? It feels quite still and peaceful in here though, like I'm not really getting any vibes in this particular room. Where I think might be interesting to reach out is actually the living quarters. So we might head over there and maybe Jared and I will try the Estes because I know you guys really like it. But I do want to leave that area monitored now and see if we get any other activity or you know, Ghost of SLS registers any figures there. Hi guys, you know the drill. I'm going to be putting on these headphones, listening to the um, Spirit Box. Amy's going to ask for questions. I'm not going to be able to hear what she's asking because these are noise cancelling headphones. And I'm going to just be repeating any words that I hear, phrases that I hear, names that I hear. And the idea is that we will have bias because I'm not able to hear what Amy's asking. I'm going to film Jared from over here. He is sitting in the doorway of one of the old co co cottages, sorry, where the shearers would have lived while they were working here at the station. Now we put him in the doorway because 
maybe it's like a portal where people enter and go in and out you know what i mean there is a theory with doorways isn't it like is I'm there pretty sure. i'm pretty sure there is yeah i hope that spider's not gonna land on me though no he's the over there door. he's down there at the next door he's your neighbor <laughs> all right i'm gonna put this on go for it i'll pull a thumb up when it's gone my name is amy and the guy's sitting on the floor here his name is jared and we reach out to anyone here in the outback here at kanyaka from the past, present, or maybe even the future. Can you give us a sign that you're around? Maybe you can come say hello to him. Give him any kind of sign that you're here. Did you used to live here? Uh. You're not sure if you lived here? Maybe you Hello? still live here. Hello. Who am I talking to? May I, I ask, please? Speaking. I am speaking, yeah. My name is Amy. Now. And this guy here is Jared. Thank you for coming through. This Speed. Isn't, this isn't Jack or Vincent. Hello. Hello, who am I talking Literally. to? Literally. So many words are coming through right now. Feed is almost relevant, I guess, because this was a, a cattle or and or sheep uh, Oi. farm. Who are you talking to? You. Oh, thanks for talking to me. Do you remember my name? Blue? Clue? Blue? Mm, not quite. Starts with A. Why are you still here? What was it like working here? Bloke. Sure, there was plenty of blokes around. I'm here. You are here still. It's very nice to know that there's somebody uh, here with us. Can you tell me? John. What? John. The name John is of great relevance to this site, with John Randall Phillips Jr. becoming a manager of Kalnyaka Station in the mid 1800s. John was largely responsible for growing this station to its great size, with it eventually housing 70 families. He also played a big part in building many of the stone structures that continue to exist today, including the workers' quarters we were investigating at this moment. Neither John Randall Phillips, Jr. or Sr., who both lived at Konyaka, died at the station, although Martha, John Sr.'s wife, was the first person to pass away at the station back in 1857. I believe there was a manager that really built this place up after Hugh Proby passed away. I think his Negative. name is John. Were you the man? At the window. Ooh, the window. Were you a manager? Gone. You're gone now. There's that little window in there. Him. You're talking about the guy in the... More than four. Is that how many people are here? Or no. No? How many lived here? How long you were here? False. Yep. Did you look after sheep or was it cattle? 100. Can you see the stars if you look up? Do you know any constellations? Get to the point. <laughs> Why? Okay, I'm here because I want to know if there are any ghosts here. I need to know if I'm actually talking to someone. The window. The window? The we one. That one. That one. I don't know what... The only window I... I remember saying there was a window in one of these. 
I mean, that is a window. Not the one that I'm thinking that we spoke about earlier. What's this one? You're in the window? Where are you? It grays. Grave, are you are you buried here at Kanyaka? Chicken. Chicken. They had all kinds of animals here, not just the cattle and sheep that they that was their business. They also had pigs and probably chickens as well. Because they had they were so remote they had to be self-sustainable. Window. Out here. Again with a window. So many windows. I don't see anything in the window. What am I looking for? Are you able to touch Jared? I don't know if you live here and this is your house, but if you could touch him, that would show us that you're around. Him? Yeah, him. The guy on the your doorstep. Just poke him or touch him. Um, that's a bit disturbing. Are you alright? I just had like... A spider? A bug or something, I don't know, just like on my hair or something? What did it feel like? Because I literally just said, can you touch him? <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I said, well, can you touch I, him or poke him? I've got longer hair now, hence why I'm wearing this gooby headband. This hippie case. headband? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got long hair, so it's hard to... I just felt my hair move. Like, the other back here. Wind? I don't think so because... Do you reckon someone touched you? I don't know. Where? Here at the back? Just in here somewhere, yeah. Ooh! <laughs> thank you if you touched Jared. That's exactly what I asked. Should I be saying thank you? I don't know. Uh, what, um, what's the deal with window? I don't know. I kept hearing the word window that whole time. I, I went and myself. looked at the window. In You know how we said, oh, there's a window in this room. Yeah. I didn't see anything in there, but... You just left me here. Well, yeah, I came back and then I said, can you touch him? And something happened. <laughs> something actually happened to you there. <laughs> I'm excited. That was cool. All right. That's so weird. You know what, though? I also got, and I had this at the um, clipper ship. I had like a sort of dizzy spinning feeling when doing this. Really? Does anyone, if, if anyone does the um, Estes method on your investigations and you've had that, let me know because... I feel like I've had that a couple of times now, where I feel like I'm drunk and the, the room's spinning. Well, I'm not in a room, but you know what I mean. We do go into a sort of a trance. Mm. Okay, well... Something just touched me. Are you freaked out? I am. <laughs> and I just asked for it. Maybe it was I a didn't bug even... or something? Well, that's what I first said. I was like, spider? Because well, I wanted to know if you were like, it felt like something touched yeah, me. Yeah, I or... actually thought something was in my hair, like a bug or something. I don't know. I could just feel hair because my hair's long. By the way, I'm growing my hair. Anyway, yeah, okay, that was weird. What is going on after your creepy head touch? I don't know, that was really weird. And I was like, I kept getting the word window. So we've now set up three cat balls and a REM pod in that window. 
and we're filming it with a ghost of SLS just to see if anything comes up. But yeah, that was cool. That's so weird. So if anyone is around, if you want to enter this room here, I mean, maybe you live there. We've put some things on the window that you kept referring to and we would love if you could show us that you're here. We don't know what you meant by window. And we're trying to understand you the best we can. Oh, what the f What the heck? All right, well that was a couple of bats flying over. Sorry guys. <laughs> I put three cat balls on the ledge, right? Yeah. There's two on the ledge. What? <laughs> There's one on the floor. I didn't knock it off when I was setting it up for anything, did I? We'll have to re oh, that just went out of focus. We'll have to review the footage. Upon review of our Ghost Tube SLS footage within this room, you can clearly see the ball fall from the window. This happened shortly after the bat incident, where we were standing just outside of the door to the left of this frame. I don't think the force produced from the bat's wings would have caused the ball to fall, as that would not only need to be pretty powerful and close to the ball, but when you watch the falling motion closely, the ball appears to shift to the left before coming off the windowsill. This doesn't add up to the direction the bats were flying. There is also the possibility of actual wind blowing the ball, given that we were outside in this moment. However, where these balls are placed is very sheltered from wind and you'd also expect the other balls to move if there was a strong gust to blow through this room. Again, it is pretty odd how the ball shifts over to the left just before falling to the floor. Additionally, it lands a bit of a distance from the actual wall it came off. What do you think? Do you believe that we could have captured paranormal activity on camera, especially given the multiple responses of window during the Estes session we had just done? Please leave me a comment below. Something is drawing us to that window. All right, I reckon, okay, let's abandon it and leave it alone. So if there is somebody here and you wanna let us know about that window, please go towards it, go towards that red light, please. We're gonna leave you alone to your own devices, so. Do as you please. Should we get out of here? I don't know what to do. This is interesting. That's really weird.
Now I'll tell you what, I know I say this all the time, but tonight has been really, really interesting. To be quite frank with you, I didn't know what it was going to be like coming out to the Kanyaka ruins, this ghost town, this old station. I knew there was a lot of life back here in the day. This place had, you know, 70... What the hell was that? <laughs> 70, 70, 70. Sounded like a gate know. opening or something. Is that a gecko noise? I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, should we retake that? No, let's just keep going. I was about to say there was 70 families that lived and worked here at one time. And we do have more of the, the ruins to go and explore. So seriously, guys, subscribe, hit your notification bell so that you get alerted for the next episode. Jared and I both saw something weird over there. But what's happened here tonight is... I got no words. <laughs> I can't tell you that it's all paranormal. Maybe there are explanations for this. But at this point in time, I'm kind of questioning and I'm like, what? What happened tonight? You know what I mean? Just... The, the REM pod going weird over here. I don't know if we got anything on the SLS in that area. Uh, we had a couple of words through on ghost tube. The Estus was very interesting and just the way that the words came out as well, it felt like they all came through together and then long gaps in between, if that make, makes sense. The whole window thing and then when I asked the spirit to touch Jared, he felt as though something touched him. Yeah, I did. That, that cat ball falling off the windowsill, I need to review the footage for that abandonment as well and see if anything was picked up, but it's really, really weird out here. Um, I'm going to say it, it's weird. I would say we definitely got more than we expected, given yeah. that this isn't like a famously haunted location, you know what I mean? No, there's, there's no prevalent ghost stories about this place. There's a lot of history out here, and I mean, I haven't seen heard of any other investigators coming out here if anyone has been out here please let me know because i'd be really really interested to know about other people's findings or if anyone's going to plan a trip out here seriously like come and visit this place it's amazing but we do have a lot more work to do i'm going to take you over for a part two series uh, to this series in the other area and i'm excited for that because i need to get to where I think that I saw something and I want to learn more about what Jared saw as well and who knows what we can capture on camera so stay tuned for that but I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did please remember to like comment share and subscribe that really helps us out if you want to do any more reading on this place or other haunted places that we visited from around the world head to amyscrypt.com we also have this merch on sale Ooh, for a limited it. time and it's got mine and jared's face on it <laughs> uh so yeah links are below for that i also post bonus content on my youtube members uh patrons they're linked below and you guys sh you should probably just follow me on social media as well while we're at it at uh, amy's group facebook twitter instagram and tiktok but well, thank you so much for watching crypt keepers until next time